Pruti Sharma? Yes. yes. Please take a seat. <coughs> so, Shruti, uh, tell the panel about yourself, your academic qualifications, your work experience, if any, and your main hobbies, very briefly. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, my name is Shruti Sharma. Uh, I have been a student of history. Uh, I was born in Bijnor, educated in New Delhi. I completed my graduation from St. Stephen's College and currently I have just started my uh, post-graduation in sociology from Delhi School of Economics. And um, I am constantly like to learn new things and explore new cultures through um, language, food, uh, books and uh, cinema. And I'd like to see myself as an optimist. Sir. So, uh, <coughs> Shruti, you have, uh, you are a graduate and you you have done MB, MA also in sociology. I just Delhi started uh, my MA. Sorry? I have just started my MA. You have started, oh, you have started this. So, uh, with the Stephens, uh, you know, in your background and with the Delhi School of Economics, both are so internationally known uh, institutions. I do not know what you had in mind initially, but why civil services? Um, so there are a number of reasons uh, why I want to pursue this uh, profession. Uh, firstly of all, sir, um, I believe that I have had a certain privileged background and therefore I always wanted to do something in which I could give back to society in some way and uh, bring about some sort of change in people around me and give other people an opportunity to have the sort of privileges that I have had, sir. Secondly, I believe, sir, uh, that on a personal level, uh, I believe the diversity and the scope that these services provide can be an avenue for great personal growth and an avenue for learning a lot, which it, which it, would, uh, which it would provide me, sir. Okay. So, uh, Shruti, you are from Delhi. Now, how the uh, safety of women, the perception about safety of women has changed over the last, say, about 10 years, ever since Nirbhaya happened? Um, yes, sir. So, uh, the Nirbhaya incident was a turning point in terms of uh, the global um, discussion that happened around Delhi regarding women's safety. So, uh, in a sense, it was the turning point and uh, a very bad incident set the precedent for a lot of good steps that were taken post that time period. So, uh, a number of steps have been taken since that time period by the Union Government and the Delhi Government in that regard, ranging from the Nirbhaya Fund to certain steps by the Delhi Government uh, to increase CCTV coverage uh, and reduce dark spaces to also increasing uh, scope for better mobility for women, uh, be it uh, in, the, in the space of women marshals in the uh, buses uh, at that point. So, so, I think a certain progress has taken uh, since that time period. Okay. Uh, Shruti, have you heard of matter going on uh, Hindu minority status? Uh, Yes, sir. So, I just uh, recently uh, what read is the in the issue, news. if you can just throw some light. So, um, in the limited uh, knowledge that I have currently, sir, about the topic, it is about uh, the authority of the state versus the centre in deciding um, the, the status of minorities with respect to religion. So, uh, there have been certain cases, um, as far as I recall, sir, such as the TMA Pi case, which talked about uh, whether the minority status can be decided uh, on a state level in terms of religious minorities or uh, it can only be decided in terms of the central government. Uh, so, I think that is the issue. No, but this is uh, primarily related to uh, Hindus being given minority status in those states where they are in minority. Presently, uh, even if suppose in the case of say Punjab or JNK, yes. right, yes. where Hindus are in minority, but the actual minority status is given to those who are in majority. Yes. So, a PIL is in Supreme Court. Yes, sir. The center is asked Supreme Court to consider this that we would like to give minority status to Hindus in those states yes. which I have mentioned. Now, since I have already given you an idea, what are your views about it? Um. 
the um, the constitution of india does protect um, the status of minorities uh, in india as a whole and so i believe if for certain um, purposes and for certain positive reasons uh, the supreme court does, does decide to give minority status in a particular state to reduce atrocities against certain sections uh, within the state it can be a positive move bilan sir question i'll take it on you see the supreme court does it uh, supreme court in no way is in a position to stop atrocities it will only adjudicate a matter in view of the constitutional scheme what does the constitution provide so how do you think it would stop atrocities on minorities religious minorities at that um so if it can provide uh, in the future a certain uh, safeguards that uh, the minority status can provide and certain special steps that can be taken for minorities in a particular state can you give any example when supreme court has provided safeguards laid down safeguards um you heard of vishakha's case uh yes okay have you been a student mm -hmm. of history yes sir who do you think uh, whom would you rate as a foremost historian of the later moguls period um so uh who are later moguls so i would say uh the the period after uh, the so called fall of the moguls or the decline of the moguls so post aurangzeb uh, so would possibly be regarded so as the later moguls beyond aurangzeb are the later moguls uh yes sir so which are not considered so uh, high and mighty in the in 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 the course of their achievements okay recently there has been a talk people certain people feel that there is a need to review and rewrite india's history what is your take on that so i personally believe that the writing and rewriting of history has been a continuous part and parcel of history since time and, uh, and forever and i believe rewriting of history is always a positive step but at the same time i believe this rewriting should be based on certain facts that history recognizes and the range of sources that history as a discipline recognizes so if the rewriting is done in that regard uh, it can only lead to more positive debate and discussion in the long term what do you understand by warsaw pact um so the warsaw pact was uh, a pact signed in 1955 in the context of the cold war uh, led by the soviet union uh, it was a security pact formed uh, in the context of the formation of the nato uh, and an opposition uh, to the nato sir i have another question from history on history yes. what was standstill agreement um so i can't uh, recollect uh, at this okay. point okay in your resume i found that you took part in parliamentary debate now how are the at school or college level debates different than parliamentary debates uh sir in college there are a number of uh, formats of debate we participated in ranging from parliamentary debate to conventional debating to turn court style of debating uh, and there were a lot of uh, variations there uh, the structure of the debate is a three on three format so while uh, certain positions were the same such as opposition leader of opposition uh, there was a whip speech as well uh, but uh, uh, i believe uh, the parliamentary debates at school uh, were on a particular topic they were uh, more structured and within a certain time limit sir as compared to parliamentary debates uh, in the parliament uh, i do feel that uh, sometimes they are uh, quite long and are not in a point to point format as we discussed in school and college sir. one of your pastime or hobby is exploring world cinema now what is exploring world cinema what does it involve uh, how do you explore it 
So uh, the reason I chose the word explore is because I am no authority on world cinema, and I like to see and look at movies uh, as they uh, as they come to me, and as one leads to the other. So uh, ranging from uh, Iranian cinema to um, cinema of Hong Kong. You are not a student of uh, languages. So other than Hindi and English, what language do you know? Uh, sir, I uh, have tried to learn uh, reading and writing Urdu, so I know the Urdu script. Uh, I like to uh, uh, learn a few phrases here and there from my friends uh, who are from different states. So, so you explore world cinema from subtitles, is it? Uh, sir, I believe world cinema is more than just dialogue. The very uh, vocabulary of filmmaking and cinema, uh, I believe, does not necessarily need uh, language to convey it. Uh, so I think that is my interest uh, in world cinema and subtitles obviously sir uh, help me understand the story better. Have you heard the term soft power? Uh, yes. Sir. What does it imply? Uh, sir, soft power is usually used uh, in opposition to hard power where hard power talks about a certain military uh, might. Soft power on the other hand uh, is uh, the influence of culture and um, other aspects in uh, in yes. increasing the might or the um, influence of a certain country or power over other powers. So, uh, cinema uh, can also be one example of… Any the, other illustration of soft power um, in context of India? So, uh, India's cultural outreaches, for example, uh, yoga and international and celebration of the International Yoga Day across um, across the world can also be an example of India's soft power. Okay, thank you. Well, Shruti, you are from, his home district is Bijnur. So, tell us something about Bijnur. Um, sir, uh, Bijnur uh, is a district located in western UP, sir. Uh, the river Ganga flows through it. So, it is a very fertile state, uh, sugar cane being one of the major crops of uh, Bijnor and therefore sugar mills and the sugar industry is also very well developed uh, with five of the most uh, largest sugar mills located here. In terms of um, historical importance, uh, the place Vidurkuti is associated uh, with Bijnor. There are a number of prominent personalities from Bijnor ranging from uh, Vishal Bharadwaj in cinema to poets like Dushant Kumar, mm -hmm. um, to historical figures like Abul Fazl associated with Akbar sir. So, it is truly a very rich… Uh, what, what product has been assigned to Bijnor district as a part of ODOP, scheme of government of UP? Um, sir, uh, woodwork and wooden craft, especially associated with Nagina uh, yeah. is assigned to Bijnor sir. Okay. So, what is this Amrit Mahusa? We keep hearing about Amrit Mahusa. What is this Amrit Mahusa? Now, the whole country is celebrating Amrit yes, Mahusa. Sir, um, sir uh, the government of India is celebrating 75 years of India's independence through Azadi Ka Amrit Mahusa, where we are celebrating uh, the Indian culture through performing arts, through our handloom, through celebrating our history. Um, so, various various steps have been taken under this ranging from establishing uh, tribal museums to organizing uh, certain cultural events to organizing quizzes uh, related to India's culture on uh, online platforms as well. Okay. So basically, we are celebrating 75th year of India's independence. So, even after now 75 years of uh, independence and so much of uh, progress on various fronts, still we have a good number of people who are Having problem, severe problem of poverty. As per recent data of Niti Aayog and even the international uh, poverty check, so we have, uh, I think, the number of course varies from 7% to 12% from different sources. What could be the reason why we have not been able to tackle this problem? So, uh, I believe that. A lot of progress has happened since the time period of India's independence, where close to 60 to 70 percent people were below the poverty line, to currently today, uh, where uh, 
close to 20% are considered according to the Tendulkar committee report. So a certain progress has taken place and the progress is ongoing, sir. But simply because of the huge challenges associated with such a large country, with such a huge population, um, and the over-dependence on agriculture to a certain context, uh, I believe, has been responsible. But government steps are ongoing uh, to reducing these uh, hurdles by taking steps in the realm of industry, in the tertiary sector and other uh, spaces. So what is the current size of Indian economy in US dollars terms, approximately? Uh, uh, I can't recollect the exact okay. So we have set a target of 5 trillion US dollars economy by 2024-25. Currently, we are at around 3 plus. Do you think we will be able to uh, go somewhere nearby by that time? Is there any, what, what measure do you think would can government of India take to really give a give big boost to our growth? Uh, yes, sir. So, I do believe that I am an optimist. So, I would say that we can surely uh, reach this uh, level. Certain obstacles are there, especially in context of the COVID pandemic and certain um, repercussions of the COVID pandemic, which have uh, been on the global economy as a whole. Uh, but personally, sir, and uh, as per the Niti Aayog uh, report as well, infrastructure is one area where we do need to uh, spend a lot of money in. So the Niti Aayog has said that 4.5 trillion uh, dollars should be spent in infrastructure creation till 2030. So that is one area we uh, need to work on and are working on. Secondly, sir, is the area of uh, industry and manufacturing, which the government has also uh, given a lot of um, importance to, especially the PLI schemes and uh, Assemble in India programs, which we are encouraging. Um, MSME is also one sector in the manufacturing sector. Uh, in the manufacturing sector, through various mudra schemes, we are uh, pushing forward. Uh, thirdly, sir, is um, is agriculture because more than 50% of our population is dependent on agriculture, and unless and until we tap on that front and diversify and uh, add more value-added products to agriculture, that can't be done. So, in that context, um, giving uh, giving importance to food processing industry uh, is important and. Uh, Bridging the gap between the between the farmer and the market uh, through technology uh, is also one step. So, what is the scheme uh, for uh, uh, basically promoting this food processing industry launched by the government of India? Uh, sir, there is a uh, scheme. Uh, I can't recollect the name, but it. Uh, PMT, PMT, people, uh, Mantri, Kisan Sampala Yojana. So, in your, in your opinion, which is the very significant public policy initiative in the last couple of years by Government of India, which has done really, in your opinion, has done really well? So, uh, I think uh, in the light of the COVID pandemic, uh, the PM Ayushman, uh, Ayushman Bharat Yojana, uh, has been very instrumental in expanding the public health infrastructure across the country and providing uh, affordable health care uh, to most sections of the population. So, in your hobbies, you have mentioned practicing yoga. So, you do it every day or? I try to. Okay. Recently, one very important development has taken place uh, with respect to traditional medicine. Are you aware? Last one week only and uh, quite a Something to do with WHO, the traditional medicines. Because we are we are establishing the first WHO center on traditional medicine. It has been approved. Okay. So now, as civil servant, what do you think that uh, you you will be uh, uh, you know with your knowledge, with your experience, with your uh, education? How do you think you, you will be fitting into that view of uh, civil servant? Uh, sir, as per my background, I feel that my background in history can uh, help me understand uh, present social realities in a more wholesome way and therefore solve them uh, using that uh, background of history and the social sciences, sir. So, firstly that. Secondly, sir, I believe, uh, I uh, think I do have uh, an ethic of uh, 
dedicate dedication towards my work and uh, personalized work ethic uh, where i uh, do uh, i'm able to stick to de deadlines and perform uh, work in an organized manner so that i think uh, can help me so thirdly i believe uh, so that um, uh, i i like to work in teams and i have good interpersonal relationships with people around me and i have been told so so that also i think can be an asset so have you any experience of working in a team in your colleges or university days uh, yes sir sir i was in school i was in the student executive and i was appointed as the secretary of cultural affairs okay. uh, so we organized all school events and participated in um, and organized all the events uh, during the entire school year Shruti, <coughs> you are a student of history yes, and you have sociology and studying sociology. What was your optional paper in, uh, in the exam? It, it was history, sir. It was history. Yes, sir. Okay. What, are, what stand has India taken on the Ukraine war? Uh, sir, Ukraine, uh, sir, India has taken a multiple stand uh, on the Ukraine war. Uh, it has taken a very assertive stand in first and foremost condemning the violence uh, perpetrated by both sides. So, and it says it says that it is um, bound by the UN Charter and stands for UN Charter and territorial integrity and sovereignty of any nation. Um, it has also uh, been talking to both sides uh, and arguing for and asking for a, a position of dialogue. And uh, diplomacy to solve the war and a uh, complete cessation of conflicts. Uh, what is India's voting record in the security council? I am sorry, sir. In the context of the Ukraine war, um, so India has abstained from uh, any resolutions by either of the two sides condemning the other. Is abstaining meaningful? Or does it mean that? Um, sir, in the context of India, I think it is a meaningful stand and it helps India maintain uh, its strategic autonomy on the issue and uh, upholding its national interest in both cases, at the same time providing itself an avenue for talking to both sides simultaneously and not antagonizing uh, any of them. Uh, do you think India's relations with Russia the uh, relationship Sir, I believe that uh, India has categorically condemned uh, the violence that is happening. So that is a constant, uh, uh, constant uh, thing which has led to this decision. But at the same time, it has also abstained in the context of. Uh, making sure that it does not antagonize both sides and at the same time maintains its uh, strategic interests. So. Why is the US so keen to uh, expand NATO to include Ukraine? Why? Um, so, uh, in my limited understanding, uh, I would say simply in terms of um the 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 conflict with russia uh, and the antagonism with russia and uh, usa has been on since the cold war and simply in terms of increasing its sphere of influence and uh, is something that uh, the U the us has in has in mind especially after the crimea annexation in 2014 as well what did biden say in the speech in poland he came out with the real intention to what was in the real intention in expanding NATO into the uh, Sir, I am not aware about this exact statement. Do you want to change the regime or not? Okay. It's a regime change. Okay. And then okay. Yes. okay, second question. Hmm. Uh, you, uh, <clears throat> you must have read about the partition of India. Yes, sir. In your view, who are responsible for partition? Because different people are saying different things. Some are saying Jinnah was responsible. Uh, some, are, some of our own small words are saying Nehru uh, and Patel were responsible. In your view, who was responsible? So, um, 
So the unique thing about history is that we never get very direct answers in any case. So there is always a conflict of interest and I personally believe it was a sum of many things together which led to the partition. Um, and it was especially the political developments which happened in 1946 and 1947 uh, due to the political uh, violence and the violence which happened in um, in Bengal uh, uh, and uh, Punjab during that time, uh, starting from the Direct Action Day, as well as the role of uh, certain politicians uh, such as Jinnah um, and the political mobilization that happened after that, uh, which ultimately led to the partition along with the role of the British government. Who was the person or the party responsible for demanding the partition of India? Uh, Sir, it was uh, the Muslim League led by uh, Jinnah. Masters in sociology. So tell me, is an individual shaped by society? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I do believe that an individual, uh, right from his or her birth, is constantly shaped by the society he or she lives in. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is your view on taxation? Taxation on digital currency. Um, so this was a step that was uh, taken in the context of the current uh, budget and uh, where cryptocurrencies have uh, come under taxation, sir. Uh, sir, I think it is a good step uh, in terms of bringing, an, uh, bringing into ambit and increasing a source of revenue for the state uh, for a reality that is, that is increasing around the world and so it is um, it is an area which was not under the ambit of state taxation. So I think it is a positive step that this area has been brought under. Taxation. Okay, uh, you do not seem to be uh, very keen on joining police services. Any particular reason? Uh, sir, I would like to uh, join any services uh, where I have been provided an, op an opportunity, sir. But since I was uh, provided uh, these options, as compared to the other services above it, uh, I personally feel that uh, I uh, am temperamentally more suited for the other services and I have talked to other friends and it also involves arms training and that uh, I would personally be less comfortable with but I would uh, be overjoyed uh, if I get to perform in the services and I would uh, do it to the best of my abilities. Thank you. I pass on to Chairman sir. Shruti, we have asked quite a few questions yes. so far. Any question which we may not, any topic which we may not have covered? Hmm. Or some topic uh, which uh, may be of your choice, uh, you would like to ask the last question on the subject of your choice. Uh, poetry is something uh, that I... So poetry, read. tell me which kind of poetry you recite or write, English, Hindi? Sir, um, I like to uh, read um, Hindi, English uh, as well as Urdu poetry, sir. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, one of my favorite points recently is uh, Sir Vishwar Dayal Saksena, sir. So tell me, how have poetries helped in the India's freedom movement? The um, so poetry is a very potent tool in uh, in in raising uh, the motivation of people and raising the sentiments of people. Uh, so. Poetry has been a very important part of the freedom struggle as well. Uh, one immediate example that comes to my mind is uh, Faiz Ahmed Faiz Subhe Azadi, uh, which was in association uh, with the freedom struggle and the partition specifically. So, thank you, Shruti. So, Shruti, we have good 10 minutes for feedback. You know, we are strong point is that we give. So long as you say that I don't need anything more to know, we will not let you go. Okay, so give your own assessment about how your performance. Uh, sir, uh, I think my performance was uh, okay, sir. I, there were a few questions that I feel that I could have uh, answered like? later. Um, so there was a certain question about um, um, about uh, Ukraine and Russia, where I felt I was repeating myself, so that I. But we didn't feel it. Okay. What else? Uh, 
uh, there were a few uh, I, a few things I couldn't recollect like the standstill agreement and uh, uh, things that I think I should have uh, answered like the uh, Biden uh, speech as well as a factual question asked by sir. So, there were uh, certain things which uh, I should have known about the yoga okay. and WHO which I couldn't recollect at that point. Right. So, Shruti, our, the panel's assessment mm -hmm. is, you know, one or two questions mm -hmm. not answering, not knowing the facts, uh, really doesn't matter. Right. Basically, mm -hmm. a test of personality yes. uh, rather than, you know, your knowledge at mm -hmm. this point in time. Now, you were excellent. Thank your you, performance was very good. And uh, uh, I would say flawless. But it's always good to identify a few loopholes. Uh, some of them you have identified yourself. So, not referring to the answers that you could not give, especially you know, knowledge related. But I will certainly point out your little weakness mm on the current affairs. Yes. Mm. You had not read the newspaper of yesterday, today and that is why you did not know much about the Hindu minority status yes. matter. Otherwise, you would have, mm. just like other answers, you would have very, uh, very fluently, mm. you would have answered this. Yes. Uh, number two, we were slightly amazed uh, that when uh, the esteemed member asked you about uh, the uh, how much trillion dollar economy yes. India is. You were just blank. And when he again asked another related question, mm -hmm. then you were, you know, you 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 were so fluent and mm -hmm. thorough in, in in all the matters, you know. So why? What made you uh, just keep quiet on that question? Sir, uh, I am not very good with the facts and uh, so no. I think I need to brush up on, on No, that's okay. So, my advice to you is generally the facts are not asked, mm -hmm. right. However, uh, certain macro indicators you are supposed to know. Now, you ask someone what is GDP, sir, it is a fact. So, then I say that everything is a fact. So, a fact may be that Kutub Minar has made, who has made, Raj Mil has made. और कितने वर्कर्स लगे थे ताजमहल में ये तो नहीं पूछें बट दीज आर फ्रॉड इंडिकेटर्स इन्फ्लेशन जीडीपी यू नो हाउ इकोनॉमी हैज गॉन डाउन अप टू व्हाट वाज द द नेगेटिव जीडीपी दैट वी रजिस्टर्ड ड्यूरिंग द कोविड एंड ऑल दीज आर थिंग्स व्हिच यू आर सपोज्ड टू नो सो माय एडवाइस टू यू इज व्हेन ऑन सच अ क्वेश्चन यू वर आस्क्ड and you did not know exact the number, don't keep quiet. Sir, I am, I am not able to, as you had said in many other questions, I am not able to recall. Uh, but but you knew, knew about 5 trillion dollar economy, you knew? Yes. Immediately, uske baat kahiye, mm. ki, sir, I am not aware exactly how much we have recorded this year. However, I am very much aware of the fact that India is aiming become yes. a 5 trillion dollar economy. Initially, it was uh, to be uh, accomplished by the year 2024-25 and uh, that's all. He, mm -hmm. Then he can ask you, in fact, the basic idea about asking the question was not to test your knowledge as to mm -hmm. how much is the, yes. mm -hmm. it was basically to know because if you are not able to answer the first question, he need not go into the details. Yeah. No point in embarrassing the candidate mm. by asking a question again and again, which you have already surrendered So, have you understood? Yes, sir. If you know a little bit about it, mm -hmm. you can always say, Ki, sir, I am sorry, mm -hmm. exact, I do not know. Then he may say, just guess. Mm -hmm. Now, that also would not be done. Mm. But even you cannot say somebody, you know, I was told in the mock interview that you would not ask such a question. Mm -hmm. You can't. So. <laughs> There are certain norms, rules, but there are certain hazards, you know, which, which are away from the norms and rules that you have to be prepared for. Thirdly, uh, your first question about giving back to the world. You mentioned two points. Yes. Giving back what I have accomplished, the privilege. Mm -hmm. Now, what privilege? You are just 24 years old. Mm -hmm. Abhi tumhe dunya ne diya kya hai? Mm -hmm. 
right mm -hmm. you can say when when you are at the fag end of your career mm -hmm. maybe people like us who have retired mm -hmm. we are giving back to chair academy mm -hmm. you know our experiences so at this point in time this answer is not apt but second thing that you mentioned about diversity you expand that a bit more right so public services you know mm. the basic difference between whether you are an academician whether you are a corporate in corporate sector mm. when you have to choose the civil services the first thing is that you are joining a public service you keen on public service that is the uniquest part about civil services तो पब्लिक सर्विसेज में कई बार ये भी पूछते थे पब्लिक सर्विस करनी थी तो यू शुड हैव बिकम अ लीडर पॉलिटिकल यू शुड हैव जॉइन पॉलिटिक्स समबडी कैन आस्क यू सो यू कैन यू नो फाइंड एन एप रिप्लाई टू दैट बट वो पूछेगा नहीं ज्यादा सो दिस इज दीज आर द टू थ्री थिंग्स व्हिच अदरवाइज इन टर्म्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर कॉन्फिडेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर फ्लुएंसी एंड द यूज ऑफ वर्ड्स श्रुति आई मस्ट से दैट यू सिलेक्टेड such right most words you know to explain your point that's your strength so we have assessed you as 70% which we it was ours is the highest so you have began with a good note in the morning and uh, any questions if you have yes sir sir i wanted to ask one thing also which sir asked about uh, the ips so do you think i can uh, give that answer or uh, get the right answer yes may i please uh, <coughs> i share everything which the chairman has said i i sir i'm particularly pleased with that you have given the foreign service and the second choice The first candidate, you are the first candidate who has not given it as a third choice. Yes, sir. And uh, but if you have given it as the your second choice, yes, sir. Then uh, for issues like Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, need to go a little deep into that. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, that is mm -hmm. that is what I would like to say. Uh, you know, the election of words was mm -hmm. mentioned, mm -hmm. and that is. a skill and one of the essential skills required for a diplomat yes sir okay. so don't change mm. my own advice is mm. don't change at all and <laughs> joke <joking>. okay <laughs> thank you so uh -huh. fast please so once i wanted to ask uh, sir what could uh, what would be a good answer to the question where you asked about uh, uh, is russia one of the concerns why uh, we have abstained Russia is the concern, mm -hmm. which we, by which uh, is mm -hmm. the main concern. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because the U.S. has been putting mm -hmm. pressure on us yes, to vote with them. We have resisted that mm -hmm. pressure. Why? Because Russia, because of Russia, mm -hmm. because of our dependence on Russians, arms imports, which are very important parts. Okay. So, as you said, national interest mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, our national interest is to stay neutral in this. But should be, in any case, I think it is an unjust war inflicted mm -hmm. by the West on Russia. Yes. You know, I'm not. You don't have to say mm -hmm. so many words. Mm -hmm. But most of us in the mm -hmm. I mean, the foreign service community, yes. we see it in the Eastern world. So it is all. You are also on the right side of history. Though your Western media will tell you that you are, you know, why is India not working for us? This and that. But you ask this question. Then we should follow the national interest because um, we import arms, and uh, at this point, with China on our border, one side, mm -hmm. the, the arms we need spare. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So, sir, so you were saying something. Sir. Yo, actually, I was telling that mm -hmm. the question about uh, the why IAS, why not IFS? Yes. Normally, it is not asked. Mm -hmm. This is again in that hazard category, and uh, if it is asked, and the reason why it is not asked that the, the interview board doesn't want to give any particular importance to any service. That that's what number two. The perception of the candidate should not be like this: that this service is superior, this service is not so superior. You haven't got into any service. You can get anything. So why should you get disturbed about? 
in case somebody asks like it was asked today the best thing would not to compare the services which you did not and take it on yourself so i am best suited i thought my personality or my not even liking i am i am more suited for or i am not suited for the indian police service which you said without criticizing you know sir a lot of or in this is a lot of traveling i want to be in india this mm-hmm. that or my father said this mother said this no just take it on your own you are more i think suitable for this particular service so i thought that i'll do justice with that service if i get it it was about temperamentalism which is a fact it's not like that it's not that right thank you so much thank you sir. all the very thank best thank you sir. and if you have done your means uh, shruti we are anxiously waiting to see your name in the list by the list thank you sir. <laughs> yeah